The first week of NCAA indoor track and field just kicked off this past weekend with tons of athletes competing all over the country, mostly on the distance end when looking at the top athletes. But today, we're gonna take a look at five athletes that we should all be watching for in the 2023 indoor season, specifically in the sprints and the jumps. First off, we'll take a look at the men's side and then next we'll follow up and preview the women. First off, Favre Ache from Nigeria. Now, he previously competed for Tennessee, but will now be running for Auburn as he transferred this year. He finished third place in the 60 meter dash indoors, which if I remember correctly, had to be rerun because of some technical difficulties or something with the timing. But regardless, he also has a personal best of 6.51 seconds. So he is up there with the best despite his third place finish. He also finished second place outdoors in the 100 meter dash and competed at the world championships in Oregon representing Nigeria. Look out for him to dip into the 6.4 second range in the 60 meters and very likely challenge for that 60 meter dash title, which he barely missed out on just this past indoor season. Next up is Javante Harding. Now he competed for North Carolina a and but recently transferred to Tennessee where he'll be representing them starting this indoor season. He is the reigning NCAA indoor 200 meter champion and has a personal best of 20.33 seconds run last year indoors. He also is no slouch at 60 meters and 100 meters, specifically finishing third place at the NCAA Outdoor Championships in that 100 meter dash. But of course the 200 meters is really his bread and butter. It'll be very interesting to see what Harding is able to do in this new training environment and this new setting, but he should very likely have the same coach as his coach is moving from North Carolina a t over to Tennessee with him. Moving over to the field, we have Wayne Pinnock from Jamaica. Now, another transfer situation, similar to Ashe, he competed at Tennessee, but will now be representing the Arkansas Razorbacks. He won the long jump both indoors and outdoors in 2022. His personal best is only 8.06 meters, and I know we would all love to see everyone jumping much farther in the men's long jump, globally pretty much, but Pinnock has really been dominating when it comes to the event in the NCAA. And it's only in his second year, but he competed at the World Championships for Jamaica where he made the long jump final. So he's gonna be coming into 2023 with some major experience. Back on the track, now down in Florida, we're looking at Ryan Willie in the 400 meters. Now some may not be as familiar with him, but coming off his sophomore year, he finished fourth place indoors and fifth place outdoors in the 400 meters. Indoors, his personal best was 45.40, while outdoors he ran 45 seconds flat. I think he's shown that he can definitely be in the mix after two very strong years and will almost certainly make some huge strides in his junior year now as a Florida Gator in that men's 400 meters. Finally, we have Matthew Bowling competing for Georgia, focuses mainly on the sprints, but honestly, Bowling should be doing the long jump way more consistently. He jumped 8.25 meters last year, which was the fifth farthest jump indoors in the world. Not just the NCAA, the world, which really says something considering world indoors happened in 2022. Now, Bowling did only finish third place at NCAA indoors, but he then chose to completely skip the event outdoors aside from one meet. Considering the landscape of the sprints compared to the long jump, I really don't know why he is focused more on the sprints as opposed to the long jump here. The men's 100 meters and 200 meters are completely stacked when we're talking about the United States. So if he put everything he has into the long jump, he could very likely not only be NCAA champion, but potentially qualify for the world championships in 2023 and maybe even the Olympics in 2024 as well. But he did manage to finish fifth place indoors in the 60 meters. Unfortunately, got DQ'd in the 200 meters, but he was already the 2021 indoor champion there. Again, though I would love to see Bowling focus on the long jump, we'll see what he ultimately chooses to do in the 2023 season. So those are just five athletes to look out for as we approach the 2023 indoor season. There are of course a plethora of athletes I left off, but go in the comments below and let me know who on the men's side you're gonna be keeping an eye out for in the NCAA. Stay tuned for the women's very soon. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be back again next time. Thanks for watching.